Hi everyone, and welcome to Studio Jake. I, of course, am your host, Jacob Airy. Today, I am going to be doing something really cool. For those of you unfamiliar, I'm going to be talking about Frank Peretti and his novels. He's one of my all-time favorite novelists. He inspired me as a novelist, and his books are just incredible. He was making some really great book series and novels touching on all kinds of themes and then he just retired one day and he's written like a couple of shorter novels since then but I am going to be focusing on his main novel series just because they're just so iconic so anyway with with all that said be sure to like this video and share it out from whichever platform you're on also if you're on YouTube be sure to subscribe to this channel ring the little bell turn on all notifications because YouTube does this weird thing where they curate your videos don't know why they do that it's really annoying but they do so that really helps me out when you subscribe like the videos and leave comments if you're on Facebook um, like the page and turn on all notifications there don't forget to share my page out to all of your friends. With all that in mind, sit back, relax, and welcome to Studio Jake. So, Frank Peretti has written a plethora of fantastic novels, specifically in the Christian supernatural thriller sort of a genre. He, his books touch on all kinds of themes, and I've read them all, and he's a master when it comes to the written word. He's one of the best of the modern Christian writers. His exploration of the supernatural, of faith, crime and his passion are very clear in every single one of his novels. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to rank his novels, but I'm not going to to include his kids fiction, the, um, the Cooper Kids series, just because those are more like novellas, they're shorter, like um, sort of the light novels that you see. Um, that I'm, and I'm also not going to include the Harbinger series because that's also written with other writers and so it's not part of his main series exactly so now I want to note that I am ranking them but I have read them all and I like them all I'm just ranking them in how what I think are is the least to the best um, but again I still like them all in fact um, one the least one I actually read in a day because I was grounded but that is why it's uh, one of my um, one of my uh, many stories regarding that. So, without further ado, here we go. We're going to talk about um, ranking Frank Peretti's novels. So at the bottom we have um, Monsters. Now this this book is a little different than his normal book. So he um, this one explores ethics and science and in biology and and whatnot. So it's this hu this husband's wife disappears in the woods, and so he like rallies a um, he like rallies a search party trying to find to try to find her, and it, it turns out she's actually been like kind of adopted by this breed of Sasquatch and whatnot, and so. Oh, while all this is going on, while the husband is trying to find the wife, um, she is being pulled around by the Sasquatch, and every time she tries to escape, one of the Sasquatch in the herd comes back and takes her back and thinks that she's its child, and a whole bunch of other uh, craziness like that. So Monster is more, um, I won't, it's like science fiction, but it's more based in the real world. So it's more, and focuses on, sort of the conspiracy around Sasquatch and also like I said it focuses on um, ethics and how science is conducts experiments and whatnot so it's very different than sort of his supernatural thriller from it and I'm not saying it's different in that it's bad it's just sort of unexpected so next up I have House which he co-wrote with Ted Decker now 
I'm not a huge Ted Decker fan. I thought that he was, um, he was really great, doing really good, and then he got, he did what he called, what was called the Circle Trilogy, and I feel like he got stuck in the Circle Trilogy, because after that, it seemed like every book Ted Decker wrote was somehow connected to the series, and it was not impressive, shall we say, but this was written when Ted Decker was at his peak. Uh, Frank Peretti and Ted Decker wrote it together. It's about these two couples, and they get trapped in sort of the supernatural house, and they're uh, running around. They're hiding from the family that owns the house, who are super, super creepy, and it turns out that there's a serial killer called Versidious Black, and he's guarding the house, making sure that they don't escape while everything is going on indoors. So it's very creepy. They did do a movie adaption of it, but the movie adaption took out a lot of the spiritual components from it. And so because of that, it just ended up being like a generic kind of thriller and wasn't really that impressive. You know, it didn't stand out because they took what made the book so unique. Uh, next up, we have Nightmare Academy. So this is part of, he wrote two books in what was called The Veritas Project, and it was about... Um, the Springfield family, and they're a family, um, mother, father, and two twins named Elijah and Alicia, and they're part of the FBI, and they use the kids, the kids are especially trained to go undercover when there's something weird going on in school. So Nightmare Academy, basically what happens is there's this children's academy where children are disappearing, and so they send in the two twins to go undercover and it, then it turns out that the kids get kidnapped and the academy isn't where it's supposed to be so they have to find a way to contact their mom and dad to be able to uh, find out where they are and and whatnot it's a very interesting novel just not as good as the next book which is hangman's curse which is the first book in the series um, in this one there's a school that's being haunted allegedly by a ghost of a of a student that got murdered and whatnot and there's also creepy spiders involved and this one was also one of his um novels that got adapted into sort of like this teen drama it didn't take out some of the stuff that house did so it kept some of the spiritual component and talked about god in it it was just some of the acting was a little cheesy um, and of course, they they kind of added a little bit more teen drama to make it more interesting. From Pareto actually has a cameo in it as one of the scientists that helps the family. So up next we have Piercing the Darkness, and this is a sequel to uh, his book This Present Darkness, which we'll talk about later. And it it, it was it's about a girl named Belly uh, Sally Beth Rowe who runs away. Um, because someone is targeting her, and demons are actually after her, and angels are protecting her. It's a really interesting um, sort of novel. I highly recommend it. It's, um, the only thing is, kind of the first part of it is a little confusing. And he has characters who cameo from the first book that really don't add anything other than to say, oh, that's so-and-so from the first book. That He either should have done it as, and this is just my opinion, he should have done it as a direct sequel or, or whatnot, or connected it more to the world, which he does a little bit towards the end of the book, and so it makes more sense. And of course the angels are similar characters, but it's still a good novel, still enjoyable, um, and I would recommend it to anyone. All right, up next is The Oath. So the town of Hyde River, is a really dark a dark place and what happened is a a man goes missing there and turns up dead and so his brother comes to explore the town of high river to see what's going on and it turns out that the the residents of the town share a dark secret about a dragon that lives in the woods. Very scary, very creepy story. And now we're getting more toward the mid-tier novels, obviously. Next we have Tilly. Now this is his very first novel, and he actually wrote this to be a play, but then published it as a novel. And it's about a woman where she has dreams about these children who are coming to visit her, and she doesn't really know why. 
it's very interesting very I won't say it's not creepy like the children aren't creepy but you can just tell that they want something from her and she may not be able to give it to them up next we have illusion so this was his, the last novel that he wrote before he went into retirement and um, basically it's about um, an illusionist named Doug Collins and his wife gets killed and he's really upset by this he's really saddened by it and he's grieving and he so he kind of goes into semi-retirement but then he meets a mysterious girl named Mandy who's 19 and she wants to be his understudy and what's really interesting is she somehow um, she somehow resembles his wife and so at first he kind of takes her under his wing because of this morbid curiosity and how she is resembling his wife and everything and like I said it's a little weird again not creepy but these two um, these two start to develop a relationship and it turns out that there is a really big um, there is a really big conspiracy afoot uh, regarding the this poor illusionist who's just trying to get over the death of his wife. So next up is Prophet. Now Prophet is about this uh, anchorman named John Barrett, who his father he sees as like this nutty Christian who um, who he work uh, who has no, nothing better to do than to just yell out scriptures and pro uh, protester and protests and whatnot, and he goes to this um, candidate for governor's campaign rally and it's uh, and he starts yelling scripture verses at people and they start getting angry with him and so Barrett is very embarrassed by this well then his father is found dead in an accident and what starts to happen after that is Barrett realizes he starts to be able to see things and hear things about people and then his son comes to town and Barrett doesn't know his son, he hasn't seen him, and now his son is a teenager trying to grow up and just wants to know his father. And so the book also explores that relationship, but Barrett is really confused by these visions he's seeing, by the fact that he just knows things about people, sort of like a prophet. And it's um, a very interesting spiritual take on the gift of the prophetic and whatnot. It's very, very fascinating. Up next we have the visitation. So they also did. There was also a, a a movie version of this that starred Randy Travis. And the movie this it was actually the best adaptation of the novels that Frank Peretti wrote. It includes um, most of the story. They did change a lot of things, but basically what happens is Travis Jordan. He's a burned out pastor who's trying to move on after his wife passes away. Um, he lives in the small town of Antioch, I believe in Washington. It's either Washington or Oregon, I can't remember. But anyway, what happens is a false messiah named uh, Brandon Nichols comes to town, and he starts like being able to do like these miracles. Like he can make bread appear out of thin air. He can heal people. And he has these uh, creepy entourage that follows him around. and. Um, people are just amazed, and the another local pastor tries to uh, confront this guy, but uh, I'd say, "Hey, where you're, you're saying you're a messiah? Where's your scars?" And Brandon has scars, and it's um, very weird. And so Travis and a female pastor in the town, sh they start to uh, investigate. Now, I always thought this was interesting. In the in the movie version, they make it where the woman that he works with is not a pastor, she's a veterinarian. Uh, I don't know why they changed that in the movie. thought it was weird. But anyway, it's a very uh, interesting, sort of creepy, supernatural thriller. And as you unravel the truth of, of what's going on in Antioch, it's very shocking and surprising. Now, number one on this list is This Present Darkness. Now this is the novel that started a landslide in Christian fiction. It it's about a um, strange conspiracy involving occultists who are trying to take over the small town, and 
um, a pastor and a reporter are both trying to figure out what's going on, the reporter from the secular angle, the pastor from a spiritual angle, and it turns out that uh, there are angels and demons involved on both sides, kind of pulling the strings. And it's very, uh, it's very dark for a Christian novel, very edgy compared, compared to what you usually read, and this is the novel that made Frank Peretti a household name. It's very good. It's very well written. It was, like I said, it was, uh, it was, a, it created a landslide in supernatural thrillers. It changed the way Christian fiction was done for a long time, especially in the United States. Anyway, that is my ranking of Frank Peretti novels. Pick them up if you get the chance. Uh, I highly recommend them. They're all available on Amazon. You can get them um, via there or even Barnes & Noble, I imagine. There's A lot of them are still in print, so definitely uh, do that. It's a good time to catch up on your reading, as we all know. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me everywhere on social media, on Parlor, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm re at Real Jacob Airy on Facebook. I'm author Jacob Airy on YouTube. I'm Studio Jake, and of course you can find more pop culture stuff on my blog, jacobairy.blog. That's J-A-C-O-B-A-I-R-E-Y dot B-L-O-G. And of course you can pick up a copy of my novel, The Seven Royals All Good Things. It's a fantasy adventure novel about these seven uh fairy tale characters. You've got, you know, Prince Charming, you've got the Brave Woodsman, you've got um you've got uh, Sleeping Beauty in there and all um, types of other characters. They're led by Prince Jasher, who was put into stasis after their land was taken over by an evil wizard. And so the seven royals, they're being led by Prince Jasher to go back to save their land. Highly recommend it for this time while you're under lockdown slash uh, quarantine. It's a great novel to pick up. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.